Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I'm super excited today because I'm driving the brand new BMW M8 competition that's parked behind me. This is the coupe. I actually had a little drive of the convertible yesterday. Now what differentiates this between say an M850i? Where are the telltale signs? Because they don't look too dissimilar from a distance. Well, this one's got a lot of typical M styling parts on it that do tell you it's a proper full fat M car. That includes the M styling dual slat grills with M8 badging on it. This one's got the M carbon exterior styling package as well. So you'll see we've got lovely carbon around here. We've got carbon wing mirror caps. And in fact, this is another point where the car tells you that it's a proper M car because these are the signature M style wing mirror caps. As we're around the side, I've got the traditional M side gills. Again, these have got carbon on it from the carbon exterior pack. We've got 20 inch forged alloy wheels, which are absolutely gorgeous. There's two options on these and behind these amazing 20 inch wheels are the humongous carbon ceramic brakes. Now these are optional on the M8 competition and the M8 competition convertible. But the regular brakes, if you can call them regular, are 395 millimeter front discs with six piston calipers. So I'm sure that they do a pretty good job. And unless you're taking it on track or you want these for aesthetic and show purposes, the steel brakes will probably fit the bill. Around the back, we have got the M rear diffuser. Again, this one's in carbon because of the carbon exterior package. And we've got four massive exhausts, and these are actually 100 millimeter in diameter. Another standout exterior styling feature is the carbon roof. And not only is it carbon on this one, but it's called a double bubble. So it kind of harps back to an old racing car. It's really cool. And in fact, it flows down the rear window onto the rear spoiler. That's another feature for the M8 competition. Obviously, something else that's under the bonnet is the heart of the M8 competition. So let's pop that now and have a look. For once, you're actually greeted with something that looks like an engine. There's not too many plastics on there. This has got a carbon fiber cover and that is just a cover that pops off. But I'm sure you agree, it actually looks reasonably mechanical under there and it looks like it means business. What is it? Well, it's the familiar 4.4 litre V8 twin turbo that we find in cars like the brilliant M5 competition. It's probably my favorite current M car. How much power? 617 brake horsepower, 750 Newton meters of torque. That gives this car a 0 to 62 claimed figure of 3.2 seconds. And the heavier convertible is only a 10th of a second slower at 3.3. Top speed limited to 155 miles an hour, but you can get the M drivers package. I think it's that package anyway, that lifts the top speed to 190 miles an hour. And that's still a limited top speed because I'm in no doubt a car uh, this slippery and with this much power could easily go over the 200 mile an hour mark. Okay, so inside, well, it's lovely in here. I wouldn't expect anything less because the regular eight series, if you can call it that, is really, really nice. The M8 competition just takes it to another level. We've got these glorious standard M seats, which are new, coated in this lovely merino leather. And in fact, most of the cabin is coated in incredible merino leather. It's just a really nice place to sit and be. We've got the brilliant iDrive 7 or operating system seven as they call it and all the tech you can imagine you can throw a stick at this one's fully optioned being a press car so i think it's got the ultimate package which is twenty thousand pounds yes that's a twenty thousand pound package if you want to watch more about practicality on the eight series in general then check out my old eight series video because i do talk about the lack of rear seats and stuff or seat space it is a two plus two it's definitely not a four seater Unless you're reasonably short adults, if you're say five foot six, five foot seven, you could probably get two kids in the back, but someone of my height at six foot four, I'm just gonna use the back for luggage. But I guess if you needed to squeeze a person or two in there, you could for a short journey. So it is handy having those extra seats if you need it. 
Everything else in here is pretty standard affair, as I was saying, eight series, but I have got the uh, M buttons at the top of the steering wheel there that you can preset with all your specific M's. So you can have, let's just go into setup. Um, you can have your engine in efficient sport, sport plus. You can have your chassis in comfort sport, sport plus. You can have your steering in comfort and sport and brake comfort and sport and in fact the braking thing is a new feature for the m8 competition so it basically gives you more assistance or less assistance on the brake pedal and i was trying that out this morning it actually really works and then we've got the mx drive setup of course this being a modern day m car uh, and very similar to the m5 competition it's got mx drive so you have it in four wheel drive to start off with in default four wheel drive sport which sends a lot more power and torque to the rear wheels and then you've got two wheel drive which disconnects the front axle effectively and gives you a rear wheel drive only and I was testing that out this morning and I can tell you that it really is rear wheel drive only 600 and nearly 20 horsepower through the rear wheels yeah one other button in here that's totally new that I've not seen in any other M cars is the M mode button uh, and what that actually does is give you three different options so we've got road sport and track cut a long story short when it's in track it basically disables all of the safety nanny aids. And I'm not talking about traction control and stuff because obviously you can override them individually. What I'm talking about is all the pedestrian avoidance controls and the pre-sense braking and all that stuff that, in fact, when I was driving Tim's amazing AMG GTR on track at the Nürburgring last year, they kept cutting in when they were seeing other cars. And you don't want any of that when you're on track. You want to be able to turn it all off. So that button does that. So it's a really nice added feature. I think I've talked enough. What I should do now is go out for a drive with my buddy Aaron, who's standing behind the camera. What I'll do first though, is start it up and uh, you guys can hear what it sounds like. Fast forward about an hour and we're right up in the mountains now on this glorious December day. And as you can see, I've got a massive grin on my face. This car is just incredible. Both Aaron and I have had a good lot of time behind the wheel now. And we're beginning to sort of understand it. And, and uh, I'm really, really impressed. And I'm kind of relieved as well because as impressed as I was with the M850i, I found it a little bit numb and disconnected to the road. It kind of did what it was meant to do. It's a great GT car, but on these very roads that I first tested them on, I found it just to feel way too heavy, and it was the sort of car that didn't like to go over 7 tenths. Whereas this, I was worried, is it a real M car? Can it be a real M car? I mean, this is still, five kilos under 1900 kilos so it's a heavy car but let me tell you it is impressive it's a real real statement piece actually from bmw i'd say the stiffness of the chassis in comparison to i haven't driven the m850 but i have driven um the 840d the stiffness of the chassis really means that it is set up and you can grab it by the scruff of the neck. It translates a lot of the bumps, the, 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 the slight imperfections over the road surface through the seat and to you. So it becomes a lot more of a visceral experience driving this. I have to say, the weight of the car is just shows mentioned, but this engine, my God. It just makes complete light work of all this weight and- Power everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, every gear and in fact, the drive that I went on this morning, which there was a little teaser in the intro, I know, but I got up at the crack of dawn this morning oh, while, I didn't. while Aaron was having some beauty <laughs> sleep. Um, and, uh, and I soon realised that as Aaron was talking about there, the chassis, it's a proper M car. Mm. It's a proper, it's a big M car. We know it's an M8, it's the biggest they do. So we're not expecting it to feel as perhaps agile as my M2 competition mm. in some of the titles. Like this bit coming up here, I would probably be having more fun and and probably go a bit quicker through here in my M2. 
But this car, once you start getting to the bigger bends, especially with the traction and the engine that Aaron's just talked about, the power and the torque mm. is, like I'm in fifth now, put my foot down up here, and it just pulls fifth gear. It pulls up like hill. a train up hill. You know? <laughs> with two of us in, we've got a boot full of luggage. that they're asking for it. This car, base price is 123 and a half thousand pounds on the road, except this one is... 141,500 on the road. So, that's a lot of money. We're talking, you know, that's Aston territory. It's sexy 911 money. Being a BMW, they're probably gonna do some really strong finance deals on them, and you'll probably find, if you are buying on finance, that the month these are probably half the price of an equivalent Aston or something in that easily, sort of price range. Easily. Yeah, so, so never really take too much notice of the retail price because there's massive contributions always. Um, and I think if this, if you could pick one of these up for, I don't know, a thousand pound, 1200 quid a month or something, it is, it's there's the crazy There's very car. little that would trouble it at that money. Really I, is. I think that's the fairest way of putting it because it, it is, I mean, and you, you know, obviously everyone, out there watching this will expect it to be a quick car it's the m8 but you know even i've been surprised at the real pace of this car because as joe said you know it's a big old car big old coupe and in that grand tour kind of form but in m8 guys grand tour is out of the window this is a sports car fully fledged it really is yeah and that's i think if you want a grand tour and you're not going to be pushing on too hard get the m850i because it offers 85 percent of the performance of this but like all M cars, when you really push this, it delivers. But but saying that, when you knock the suspension back into comfort, the ride's actually really acceptable considering yeah. we're on big 20 inch wheels um, and it doesn't feel too bad. M5 Comp, in my opinion, is my favorite outright BMW on sales today. Is this any better than that? It does feel maybe a little bit more agile, but it's very hard to say because I haven't tried an M5 Comp on these beautiful, smooth Spanish roads. I've only tried it at home, and at home it works amazingly. So I, I can't say if this is any better or worse than M5 Comp, but what I can say is an M5 competition is 25 grand cheaper, and you're getting all that practicality and extra car. So that to me still stands out as the bargain of M cars, uh, if you can call a 100,000 pound car a bargain. But um, but yeah, this is a standalone product. It's a beautiful looking object. And it I think really anyone, that, yeah. Yeah, anyone that buys one of these is going to be that Aston or that 911 customer who wants the yeah. beautiful looks in the two-door coupe. Um, it's a look back car. You know, every time you park car. this, you're looking back at it. Yeah, 100%. it's It's menacing, it, it, it's, it's got poise, it's got a real aggression to its stance as well. And a lot of the features that I know Joe was taking you through with the walk around earlier, like the double bubble roof, and that following line down onto the double bubble, well, theoretic double bubble spoiler. Um, you, you know, you, you really do get an idea of the intention um, behind the, you know, the design ethos with the car. Just <laughs> and how good are the brakes? Oh, I was perfect timing just to mention that the brakes are mega. I mean, mega. This shouldn't be possible in a, a five nylon meter. two ton car. Yeah, that's five meters long. Five meters long. long. <laughs> I mean, I also drive a two ton five meter long car, <laughs> and trust me, my CL's not doing this. No, you couldn't get you couldn't get a more. Uh, opposite end of the scale no. car, could you? What a piece of road. What a piece of road. We're, we're, Ooh, we're pushing Jesus. on, obviously, for the video, but we're also pushing on because BMW provided an amazing lunch somewhere down the end of this road, so uh, we're trying to get there. I've been uh, slaving air and away with the camera work and stuff, but... Well, um, I'm here, so I can't complain. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe I'll just shut up and we'll just enjoy this road Have for a couple of minutes. Have a little bit of driving, yeah. why not? traction you just feel the x drive working all the time it's just mega and one thing to actually note sorry i know we were just going to go for some pure driving is that what you'll find a lot with these spanish roads is that there is a lot of camber changes there are some imperfections and stuff like that 
But even if the chassis knocked back into sport, you know, going for the firmest possible setting, you're not chopping and jumping and skitting about everywhere. No. It is still compliant enough that, you know, it, it's hugging where it needs to hug, but not rolling where you think it might be as well. Exactly. everything is in the chassis technology and suspension technology you're still hustling two tons yeah. and you've got to be careful when you're doing that with a lighter car you can throw it from left to right off the accelerator onto the brakes you can transition really quickly in a car with this much momentum and weight and mass you've got to be smooth with those yeah. inputs you've got to come off the accelerator onto the brakes gradually come off the brake gap gradually if you do those movements too severe lift it, off oversteer oh, yeah. you know you get all sorts, don't you? Squirrely coming down if you if you if you try and break it too hard, yeah. Because you do have that mass behind you, you know. You're going to be so conscious of it. But I think that's not a bad thing in so much that I, one thing that I've noticed about being in the car over the course of today is it really does lead you into how it wants to be driven. Yeah. I think you adjust quite well to the settings. You adjust quite well to the responses. And after an hour or so in the car, you find yourself not plowing into those corners because you're appreciating what's necessary yep. in terms of maintaining the best possible, you know, rate of uh, rate of knots across uh, across the um, the mountain roads that, that just, just opened up away? so spectacularly. <laughs> I mean, I wow! I think we both gasped for air. Then it was just like, are you serious? This is just amazing. so many times on my channel but this is why all the hard work is worth it drives like this got my best friend sitting next to me it's just unbelievable did you just go to give me a high five then? no 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 i just went to do that <laughs> then i saw that car come around the corner and i was like these roads aren't that wide <laughs> Just See, we're not, oh. we're not being thrown around in the car. No, in my M2 comp, I would have got airborne through there. <laughs> and I probably would have headbutted the roof. Yes. So It would have looked great on camera. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I will say as well, um, I am quite, you know, I always enjoy doing things like this because... Joe's one hell of a driver. I know I, I know he's my bestie and I would say that, but he really can pedal. And it's so nice sometimes to sit back and have the confidence in him and just sit back and really take in what is possible in this car. Because trust me, I don't drive like this, you know? I don't have the skill, so I never try to anyway. But you know, it, it's, it's nice to be able to appreciate what is possible from cars like this. And really, you know, it shows me perhaps a little bit more of the limits that I don't get to myself. Thanks, Mac. That's all right, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's, uh, for those of you long-term subscribers, you're now gonna recognize this fantastic bit of road as when I shot my original G35 series video. And we're about to go through one of the most incredible sort of gorges ever with the most amazing view. We'll end with that, but I tell you what, before we get there, how about we cut to Aaron and I yesterday driving the cabriolet version or the convertible version because uh, we both had a little taste of that car for a couple of hours um, and yeah let's go and have a look at that car and then you can join me back on this fantastic bit of road before we end the videos. Behind me we've got the M8 Competition convertible so this is also going to be available in the UK sitting alongside the coupe. It's about £7,000 more base price, spec for spec. As far as I can tell, the front end of the car, and in fact, most of the styling of the actual car is fundamentally the same as the coupe. You've got the same massive carbon ceramic optional brakes on this one. We've got some really nice carbon styling, exterior styling on it. The same big front mouth that swallows in a lot of air because it needs to feed that 4.4 liter V8 twin turbo. You've got the same side blades and as I say, pretty much it looks very similar styling wise. Obviously, once you get to the middle of the car where the cabin is, there's no roof because this is a convertible. 
So in order for there to be no roof, obviously we've lost a bit of the stiffness of the shell. So BMW, like you do with all convertibles, they've got to stiffen it up in the floor pan and stuff like that in the actual main chassis itself. So that does effectively add a bit of weight. But what I like about this particular convertible uh, and the 8 Series in general is that it's back to a cloth top, I call them, and not the hard top, because I think hard top designs, especially some of the BMW ones, think back to the sort of E90 era, I just didn't like the hard tops when they were up. They just looked a bit awkward. We've been driving around in this and I can report that with the roof up, it's really well in insulated and you actually forget that you're in a convertible. Now, roof up to roof down time is 15 seconds and roof down to roof up time is 15 seconds. And I'll actually demonstrate that now. I've got the key with me. So if I just hold down the lock button, it should start going up. And as with the Z4 that I tested quite recently, it's such a silent operation. Deadly, deadly silent, which is really nice because convertibles of old would have that whining motors. Now, another thing that you have to sacrifice with pretty much every convertible on the market is boot space. So we'll walk around there now. Again with this, we've got an electric boot lid, which I think is standard on this particular car. We do have to sacrifice some boot space in here. And in fact, myself and Aaron have only got a couple of sort of cabin sized bags in there and you are limited. The reason you're limited is because when the roof is folded, it actually comes down in here. But when you've got the roof up, you've got, actually got a fair amount of luggage room and it goes back a long, long, long way. I would say that's about four and a half foot of depth of luggage space so it's not actually too bad but you've got to remember realistically that's your luggage space because you want to be able to put the roof uh, down especially on a day like today it's funny how the convertible mechanism was silent but yet the boot mechanism whines i don't know how they've got that so wrong but anyway okay guys you join me inside the m8 competition convertible and I have to say, the first thing you notice about this car is the fact that you haven't got a roof and therefore you hear more of the engine. <laughs> and what an engine note that is. Isn't it really good? Oh. Now, Aaron will back me up on this. Even as a passenger, you can feel the weight and momentum and it really confuses you at first because it's so fast and so it breaks fast. so well yeah. and it handles so well but if you try and do something too quickly like off the accelerator onto the brakes or through some really quick turns you feel the overall momentum and this car is a hundred odd kilos heavier mm. than the coupe so although it's an amazing sports car Grand Tourer I'll definitely say that convertible isn't kind of supercar territory um, just because of its extra weight. Other things we need to talk about, this being a convertible, is actually how well, not insulated we are in here, but how little air and disturbance yeah. you get in the cabin. Aaron and I have been having conversations on the way down here on the motorway and with no issues at all. We've got a wind deflector behind us and obviously we've got four electric windows. There are little ones for the rear passengers talking rear passengers just like the coupe the rear seats are a bit of a joke we've got some gear on them today not that sort of gear our camera gear it's a two plus two setup i'd say to be kind yeah almost like a 911 isn't it maybe mm. a little bit kinder out there or a bit bigger than a 911 um talking of the cabin and space plenty of space in the front here there's loads of room between Aaron and me yep but my driving position i am sitting a bit higher than i am in the coupe and again that's just a trait of convertibles the bottom of the chassis is a bit thicker they've had to reinforce it so the h point where the seat sits is up about it feels about two inches higher than it than it is in the coupe so i do feel like my head is sort of <laughs> close close to the roof but um unfortunately but, you've just got to concede that for the torsional rigidity that they have to add to convertibles like this you do and it's always it's one of those trade-offs isn't it yeah being in the car and driving around it feels very much like the car you imagine it would be that's no bad thing i mean the truth is probably Probably not a particularly good thing as well, I suppose, because you'd, you'd have an impression of it being a slightly weighty car yeah. with, a, with a slab of an engine, which, which it is. Yeah. You've got all of the BMW refinement of the interior. The touch points, I think, have included immeasurably. Oh, I mean, I think a modern day 
BMW cabin, especially at the top of the range. Now, mm. even the one series I've got at the moment is yep. so well put together. But when you get in this, I mean, the doors, you know, this this Bowers and Wilkins sound system is just next level. The leather, it? you know, across the entirety of the dash, across the waist rails, yeah. across the roof lining. So, I mean, that's going to help with the sound deadening as well as we were talking about how well insulated it is. But, you know, aside from that aspect, it adds such a kind of sense of luxury to the interior that, you know, despite the price point being rather high. Rather high. Oh, did we mention that this car is £148,000 on the road? <laughs> so as I said, the price point being slightly high, I, I will say that you get into it and you are aware that you are in a car of this price though. Yep. The leather, the, as I said, the touch points, the switch gear, you know, even with the Bowers and Wilkins as well, you can even see the speaker setup demonstrates how much it is, how, you know, yep. how, uh, how really, um, you know, good quality it is. And everything, as I said, is very tactile. It's a, it's a very nice place to be. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed the, uh, the little cabriolet snippet. Um, certainly I still stick to what we said yesterday, although we'd only had a little go in this car. It's uh, definitely an impressive car, but this car instantly shows it up. I know it's only 125 kilos Feels lighter. so much more. Feels, feels so much more. It feels 300 kilos lighter. The, the center of gravity feels so much better. The chassis feels stiffer. It just feels more poised, and that's exactly why Although the M8 cab is a sort of lottery winning car for me, um, this is where my money would go every day of the week because, you know, it's an M car. I can, I, you know, I appreciate why the, the, the convertible's there though. We, we Brits buy more convertibles than any other country in Europe. Yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can see the market for it and I'm, I'm absolutely positive I'll see lots of them um, around on the roads. Yeah. But for the involvement, for the sheer, you know, for the sheer want of, of you know, visceral, hand-taught, you know, knuckles-white kind of driving. Yeah. This is in a league completely apart from the convertible. It really is. I'm going to wrap the video up now. It's going to be a super long one, but I'm hoping and I'm sure that you enjoyed most of this at least. Um, massive thanks firstly to my wingman Aaron for coming out and helping me with everything. And um, I'm sure, and I know that, you know, the majority of you love his stuff and love hearing his sexy voice. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks a lot, Aaron. And uh, thanks hugely to BMW UK, of course, for the most epic trip ever. Yeah. Um, and producing yet another amazing M car, um, this one, this one really, really is. It's far more impressive than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be a hotted up M850i, but there's lots and lots of proper M car DNA in this, so absolutely love it. Um, big shout out to my brand, Control and Shift. Head Control over there, and Shift. Uh, grab some last minute sort of Christmas gifts uh, for your partner, or your loved ones, or whatever for yourself. And uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and leave any comments below. Make sure to follow both of us on Instagram, babygorilla81, Joe Achilles. From us in sunny Spain, adios amigos. Hasta luego. So what does the display key do? Hey, but shouldn't you be driving? I am driving, I'm but, just looking at the key. What? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it drives itself. Oh, it's one of them ones. One know? of them, them. Yeah. <laughs> Scratch my balls. <laughs>